Welcome to the Freedom Unchained channel. Like always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment, let's get a conversation started. Hit the like button, and don't forget to share this video around to everybody that wants to be free, independent, men and women living on this land. We'll teach you how to do that. We're studying common law. I'm a learn teacher. I learn it and I teach it. All right, this is part one of the interview with Synth from Skycoin. Um, I was so excited about this interview. I'm so glad I got to have a conversation with this man. He's a genius, uh, autistic genius. I asked him if he was autistic. <laughs> and of course, we know he is a very high functioning autistic person. Um, I'm glad this man is in this world because he's doing great things with his project of Skycoin. I believe his technology he's creating will help us free us, help free us all from the chains of the governments and the deep state and so on and so forth. These videos are going to probably be demonetized from the stuff we are talking about. Hopefully they don't get strikes and get taken off. Um, so please do uh, feel free to donate to the channel, support the channel in any way. Um, please don't tip bot me on Telegram. Uh, I haven't got figured that one out. So if you guys want to hit me up on Telegram, tell me how I can uh, set that up. It's at Garrett J. Grubbs. You guys see me around I'm trying to work my hardest on learning how to do videos and support the Skycoin network more. Skycoin community, Skyfleet, as we like to call it. But I am not an expert in technology and stuff like that, so you guys are always above my head, like, way up here. Um, I do need to connect with more people so I can um, have a better idea of uh, the path I need to carry to um, manifest this idea that I want to put on uh, CX in the... Uh, Fiber blockchains, sky wire, sky mesh, future internet, however it all comes together, because it all should, it all will come together. But my point there was please use the Skycoin address in the description below or scan the QR code in the video that I put in the border. And um, let's just get to it. I hope you guys enjoy and uh, stay tuned for part two and part three coming up in the next few days. All right. Yeah. Oh, when do you, you want to start the interview? We'll, we'll talk. I think this is like well, stuff for the interview. I'm just, we're just gonna. This is pretty much the interview, man. I just want to, you know, have a conversation oh, with you. I'll, you know, edit it as we, as I need, and then. Um, so I got I got a oh. few subjects depending on wh where you want to start. Like I, I want to talk about social media and like, if, are you are you guys mm -hmm. working on that right now? Yeah, that's a okay. major, major, major. Uh, I, th that's why yeah. my hair's falling out again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's so much work. Yeah. Because I love the idea, like hearing you your idea the first time, you know, knowing about Skycoin and how it definitely is possible. Like, because I kind of had the same idea, like, you know, you publish to your own blockchain and then, and like, you know, Everyone to get to copy, yeah, to get people away from Facebook, Twitter, and all the big social media. Maybe we can have like a, a main page, a feed, you know, mm -hmm. so like you just post to your feed kind of thing, you use your technology, but it also posts to Facebook, Twitter. And so on. And then eventually, you know, once they just focus on their own little feed, you know, their page, and they can like, and then they're starting collecting their data, then they can finally get away from Facebook and Twitter, you know, and do yeah. and do away with it eventually. So I, I don't know, like, your, what the interface you guys are kind of thinking about or what exactly. So, so, so this is, so, okay, so um, blockchain is just a database. So we don't yeah. have to put coins on blockchain and do these ICO pump and dumps, right? Yeah. We, don't, we don't even need money on blockchain. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. put your tweets on blockchain, your video, your blog, you say whatever the hell you want, post, you know, and what happens is everyone who's, your friends who subscribe to your, uh, your feed, they're going to get a full copy of all your data. So there's two modes. Thin client just asks a server and it says, hey, who has this data? And everyone who is, uh, has a copy is now a, can provide APIs. So it um, can provide, uh, so I can say, give me this feed or give me this tweet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, there's a list of servers that have a copy of that blockchain. And you just contact one and say, hey, give me this data. And they give it to you, right? Mm -hmm. That's a thin client because it'll run on your phone and whatever. Then if you have your computer at your house, you just, um, you know, you have one terabyte hard drive, a 10 terabyte hard drive. You, have, you, can, you can have 40,000 blockchains on there with all the, the whole data for all, the, uh, all of those people. And you have a full copy of that data. You can unplug the cable from the computer. And it doesn't matter because it's actually being served locally from your computer. That's offline data that 
you completely control. And so to get rid of a blog, you have to get rid of every copy of the blockchain. You can't just block an IP address or a website anymore. So what we're doing, so we tried to do this thing called CXO2 uh, and CXO2.0, and we did a bunch of crap with immutable data structures. And it was just too hard for the developer. It worked, it actually worked, but it was too hard for developers. So we decided that we're just gonna use blockchain as a database and we're not going to try to keep each element or blog post immutable and, and it's, it's just too hard. Yeah. So we're just going to have the collection of blog posts as one immutable object referenced mm. by a hash. And, um, and so, so pretty, you know, just keep it pretty simple. So now we have this thing CX, which is our programming language. And I just spent the half a year refactoring that. And then we're rewriting the compiler front end. And basically when that's done, we're going to be putting the social media, like telegram, um, um, Twitter, blog posts, and some video sharing, we're going to be putting that on, on, the, on this back end. So there's, there's two parts. One is, you know, if you have your video channel and you only have 2,000 videos, it's like I have a title, some com- I have the comments, I have a description of the video, I have a thumbnail. That, that's not a lot of data, right? The thumbnail might be 200 kilobytes, 20 kilobytes. The title is, it's tiny, right? Mm-hmm. So you have 20,000 videos and it's less than two meg, two megabytes. But then the video files, two gig, four gig, 20 gig, okay? So what we do is we, we put your index of your videos on blockchain. And then we have this other system for storing these bulk, fi- huge files. It's basically like BitTorrent that we, we wrote, rewrote from scratch. And that's where the video files, the audio files, the big, the big stuff is going to be. And, and I don't know what that's going to be called yet, like SkyFS or SkyNAS. So when we have, we're going to write our Telegram app and um, and all the the channels are going to be on their own blockchain so you have this channel this channel this channel this channel so if you know trump has his channel it'll mm-hmm. be this blockchain this guy has this channel it'll be his own blockchain and then you basically just subscribe to the channels you're interested in and um and then what um, about um it might what about discover discoverability like if you don't know someone that kind of exists like uh, you guys thought like is it going to be like how google scrolls all the blockchains and then you know comes brings back searches or or like an algorithm where you like you know, search hashtags and stuff like that yeah so there's so each each data store will be independent but then in the office we we have a, a beast these mega computers we have like i have a, a, I have a, a server rack and I have 1,024 cores on that server rack. And I think I have like half a terabyte of RAM. And each of these has like two 10 gigabit internet cards. And then we have 32 uh, one gigabit fiber optic lines in both ways in the office. So I, I have like, so I, 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 we're upgrading our servers right now because we're dealing with Skywire. Our servers are going offline right now because we have too many users and we, we, we had a lot of DevOps problems and we just rewrote our deployment completely from scratch and it's, uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to, you know, the only way to do this is I download everyone's blockchain and then I do an index and we provide an API. And I think we're going to open source that. So if you want to do that in your house, like if you have 40 servers laying around and you want to run your own index, you you can do that. But I think we're going to provide that as a, a public service or mm-hmm. allow them to choose like an index provider. And so this is what's called federation, which is everyone publishes their crap, their stuff, and then someone can download all of it and then write an index and then create an API. And that API, like they might create an index and put that on blockchain. And then you might download the blockchain index they produce locally so that you can actually run the index offline. Yeah. Like this system um, is like if there was a nuclear war and half of the, you know, most of the internet was annihilated and all the people die and 80% of the computers were wiped out and your computer is in your basement and it's not connected to the internet, it doesn't care because the way that this works is you have a full copy of all the data locally. And if it has a local copy, it's going to go to the local copy. It's not even going to leave your house. So like, it's just going to, if you, um, it's not like the internet where every tweet, it goes all the way to the other side of the earth or 45 ISPs and through 45 governments that are, and that are grabbing the data and say, what IP grabbed that tweet? What, what, when did they do that? What time? Where is, you know, is he on the, is he on his cell phone? Is he in the bathroom? <laughs> is he on his Wi-Fi? What browser is he using? Um, you know, and, and like, oh, which member of that household, you know, they're geolocating you down to like four mm-hmm. meters and trying to like, you know, track which cell phone tower your yeah. IP address well, is. There's a, uh, you've heard of the quantum financial system, haven't you? No, a no. little bit. 
Well, they're, they, they're using GPS because, you know, they have to track everybody. It's pretty much the deep state central banking system trying to move over and, you know, take control, like, you know, use blockchain technology, kind of not really the technology, but be like, hey, you know, it's blockchain. And it's like, you know, they're kind of <laughs> masking it, but it's pretty much like another slave way to slay and enslave everybody. And, you know, we have to have GPS just because, you know, those criminals, uh, Mundi, Munner <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, the drug Isn't dealers like and RFID stuff like that. Like tags and the money, like yeah, I, I, your cell phone and like yeah. your dollar bill goes by someone else's cell phone and it uploads and Google uploads the cell phone RFID tag. I, I have no, with the GPS I have location. no, I have no, I, I did a video, on. I had a video on it. Like they're minting like a, a hundred million gold coins and a hundred million silver coins. And then there's going to be GPS. I am not so like, like, oh my god i thought at first i was like i thought it was all on the on a, a blockchain so what, now we got coins and shit and then i keep going and researching it and they're like oh now we're each country's gonna have like an asset back a basket and stuff like i was like i thought it was just uh, a gold back uh like cryptocurrency kind of thing and now we got asset now we got every country having an asset back so i'm like this shit is so confusing it's like we don't need this shit we got blockchain it's like you guys are being enslaved if this is the shit you get, think you're get, you're gonna use in the future or if you are going to use it in the future, man, you got you got some problems. <laughs> so, the, so the two biggest issues, two biggest, Skycore right now, one, if we don't re-decentralize the internet and give people control of their data, they're going to be brainwashed and enslaved. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. They're, just, they're goners. The second thing. Uh, well, we're 90% 90, 90 already there. We're just trying to reverse that. So we need to do it with the, you know, decentralization so we can start reversing people's brainwashing. <laughs> and then the second thing is the governments, like if you, you look at Pakistan and say, you didn't get the vaccine, we're going to block your SIM card. Like they're going to sh just shut you. We don't like what you said on Twitter. We're going to shut off your whole internet connection. They're getting, oh, internet yeah. license. You don't, you, you lost your internet license because we didn't like your tweet. The, the U.S. government sued Twitter and they said, we'll drop the lawsuit if you agree to censor whatever we want. And they said, okay. Please just don't sue us, Big Daddy government. You know, and uh, and the, and you know, and Twitter basically bend over and open their asshole. So the so the government and I don't even know what age and the U.S. The US government is not one government. It's like a bunch of freaking like even in the DOJ. Like I talked to like a D.C. lawyer and he's telling me about the, what's happening in the DOJ and like Trump's old people are fighting this and like one group of the DOJ is and you know subpoenaed. Mm -hmm. uh trump's attorney's emails and the other one is uh fighting against the you know, like <laughs> i'm like like what the like you go inside one of these agencies yeah and I, i've talked to people who work at these federal you know federal agencies and you know the fbi and the you know and the it, it, and the cesspool like like you have a guy and he worked you know, basically like for the CIA and then he, he was in like Sudan or something and he, get, and he knows Sudan. So he gets a job, you know, he worked for the military. Then he goes and he gets a job in CIA. Then he goes and, um, and not all these people are assholes. Like there's some fucking assholes. Okay. But so it's, it's like a nice guy. He just, you know, he goes to the military, he goes to college, goes to the military. Then he goes and he, uh, he gets put in Sudan for the, you know, CIA. And then he gets a job as an oil executive running like their, you know, oil thing in Sudan, right? Then he leaves the oil company. Then he starts his like little e-commerce business and then he sells it. Then he, you know, and so you have these guys like through their whole life, right? And and I and I've met a lot of these, and there's a lot of very, very good people, but they tell you like how fucked up like everything is. And and if you you ask them like would I have gone into this stuff, they say they would just tell you like no, like you're young, run for the hills, <laughs> stay away from that. It's not if I knew what I knew now, you know, and and or he said maybe it was good it was fun 40 years ago, right? In the eighties, I had a great time, but if you're going in now, you're going to, you don't even just run. <laughs> and I, I had even one of these people tell me like, they told me go overseas, set up a bunch of commodity production companies mm -hmm. and just wait for the U S to like commit suicide and then come back, you know, come back in when there's blood on the street and yeah. just buy up like, you know, city blocks for pennies yeah. on the dollars. Like, you know, Detroit, or you go into Detroit, $10,000, you buy up a city block. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and, and they're it, 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 some of the stuff these people say is uh, it's just dis it's disturbing. Well, that's, um, what they, that's what they do. Like, uh, what is it, Black Rock or something like that? Now they're getting money from the government to go come once the market crashes. You know, buy up all their and they're outbidding all, all the all, all outbidding all the Americans for homes like markets With cash. Like, 
the, the cash fag gives them a gives them cash. <laughs> Here's our cash. Yeah. yeah, the the Fed prints up money, and then everybody's <laughs> money's you know worth less in their pocket, and then you know BlackRock goes out and buys all their houses from underneath them, and and then they turn in they I, turn into renters. <laughs> yeah, Larry Fink. I don't even like uh, these are the guys that ran the TARP scam in two thousand eight. And then they were they had a repo market crisis. Trump put him in, and then Biden said that Larry Fink is going to be the Treasury Secretary. What they meant was it doesn't matter who gets elected, Larry Fink's going to be running the Fed. So we're not going to screw with your your money. And and you know they have a uh, they have Bill Gates. He bought up this farmland, right? The government has a secret program where they are paying people to own farmland for not producing crops. So oh, if yeah, you're this billionaire and you buy up land, the government gives you a check for not growing crops, just for owning the land. And then um, they're buy- so they're like, oh, I get free money. I just buy the land with this loan and I get free money. And he'll take out a loan for like, oh, you know, a hundred billion, you know, ten billion dollar loan. And he'll buy out ten billion dollars of farmland, and then he has he'll then get this government money to pay the the interest on the to pay off the mortgage on the farmland, and he'll own it after like eight years. And this is, yeah. and th- then they tried to ask, how much money are they sending out? Who's getting that money? What is this program? How much are they spending? And the government agency just stonewalls them. They just ignore it. Like no one can get any information from the part, like the, who's getting these farm grants, where, like, it's a giant, like, it's like you were going into the Pentagon and asking like, you know, uh, where they bought all the screws for their nuclear missile. You'd get more, you get more information on a Freedom of Information Request Act, um, like, you know, on the, on the, like, About the aliens. dead engine of the B-12, <laughs> yeah, aliens, or the, you know, the, 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 the nuclear weapons, and where they're storing the nuclear weapons, and whatever, then yeah. you would, who's getting these farm grants, right? Yeah. So, so the, this whole system, so this government, they say the government, right? There's no government. It's yeah. a bunch of freaking, even within one organization, it's a gang, fighting each other it's like a giant yeah. turf war well they say so, like if they cut the fbi's funding off like it would they have so much money they just be able to run themselves or the cia like you just cut you can cut them if they cut the funding off they collected so much money and they, they're you know so many assets that they just self it's self running so you know you can't kill them really <laughs> the, the, the cia is really funny because they legalize moonlighting so pretend you're like exxon mobil you can let, you know, you have like rent a cops, like you can rent, like a, you have a party and you like can rent some like, you know, LA PD off shore guy, uh, off duty police officer with a gun and a baton. And he can like whack people and shit. Cause he's a police officer or whatever. Right. So, you know, like these rich people will hire, they made it legal so they can like hire off duty police officers. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you, like that, like they let them moonlight. Yeah. yeah. The CIA, like under Bush, they let them moonlight so that CIA guys getting like 60 key a year over mm-hmm. here from his um, um, from his official job at the CIA, but he's getting 150,000 over here from a year from an oil hedge fund. So they're not actually working. They're like sort of working for the CIA, but they're not, they're CIA agents that are getting three times their salary from a fucking like, you know, th- like a uh, third world vulture looting hedge fund. And they'll like hire all the agents in Sudan to make, you know, this is just like, um, I don't even, they privatized everything. Yeah. It's like, it's like this giant, like rent a cop. It's like, you know, private, like, like Nike getting like briefings from the NSA. Like you have like Nike and Pep, the CEO of Nike and Pepsi getting like, like going to like, I think it was like, not DTIC. I forget what this thing was called, like DNAC or something. And they have like pe- the Pepsi CEO and, and, um, and CEO of like Nike, like company makes sugar water and the other company makes sneakers and their CEO needs to get briefed on their like competitors in China using the secret NSA intercept data. I'm like, what the, like, you know, this whole thing turned into like some weird, um, what's the, there was a movie about this, like 1960 about like the Bell telephone company and the, the guy gets like abducted down to the, you know, to the underground layer from the phone booth. And and he meets like the, (laughs) Like the hidden master running the bell tell like yeah we 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 control the president we we we, we have all of them on wiretap we know everything they say ha ha we control the world you know yeah. and um and it, it's just like um so so anyway so so they what was it so they how do we get in the government part um they we need said, to, we need to decentralize the internet is how we really got into it and I I have I have a yeah. you know I brought up uh ICP you said I don't know what that is it's uh the D Infinity. 
have you did you go do any research on that there's a bunch of projects and well, a bunch hey, hold of on stuff. one second let me, they say mm-hmm. when i researched it i was like this looks like the people that are controlling us now are reacting to your project like yeah. it looks like the deep a deep state's reaction to you so i kind of want to know your input on that and, you know there's a lot of people that sort of like I did UXTO object and then QDOM took one of my blog. I know Patrick died. I worked when we launched, we were launching Skycorn in Shanghai. He, uh, I was in his office. So he, he left shell pay and then he started uh, QDOM and then he, it was the first one to, to basically implement smart contracts with UXTO objects instead of Ethereum. <laughs> because in Bitcoin, every time you do a transaction, you get a new address in Ethereum, every tra- transaction is in the same address so the government just pulls your address and they see your whole account history mm-hmm. it's in one transaction it's so easy so he figured uh, patrick died did uxto objects then he could do smart contracts and every time you do a transaction you get a new address and it makes it a bit harder to trace so a lot of people copied us like um even uh sia coin they copied like you know obelisk and this and that they steal our marketing names and they steal <laughs> our blog posts and our logos and shit we wrote four years ago there's still people launching new co- you know it's really it's uh there's a company called polychain capital and they've launched like 600 or 800 coins and they just keep throwing shit against the wall and and seeing what sticks yeah and um I'm very suspicious of any coin launched by those guys because they just ha- find some dev-, dev team, launch some ERC-20 token, try to, they pretend like it raised $100 million. They took like $100 million from the left pocket, move it in the right pocket and say, we yeah. raised $100 million. Yeah. And, and it's just like them well, moving the money. But, from their well, when I did the research, it was like, yeah, these Silicon Valley guys are, you know, big investors in it and stuff like that. I was like, well, that seems a little fishy and scary. Let's not. Go. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stick with Skycoin. <laughs> so we need to. Um, we need to. So the two things are to stop them from being able to identify protocol, the traffic, what you're sending, who you're sending it to, and that's Skywire, right? That we yeah. did. The second thing is to get the data storage from the users back in their hand, and that's CX and the CX chains. And I want to do that now. And I, I basically had to put the mesh network on the back burner. I wanted to do the mesh network and, and it actually, it works and you can install wireless and you can set it up now. And there's actually a guy in New York, he, he got it working. Okay. And, um, but I had to just get this two, these two things done now. And then for also companies, they have like mining companies and, um, and uh, like telecom, you know, we're, we're, we're basically operating internet service providers, uh, you know, community ISP. So we have a lot of stuff that we have to do on the back end for that. So I want to get the wireless, but, but right now it's the, you know, this year is Skywire and then the CX and then getting these social media things. And then I've been wanting... I've had social media ready now, honestly, for almost six years. I already prototyped it. It was already designed. It was even implemented. But I never released it because all the shit that was happening with the election. And remember, people left Reddit for vote. And then they, the investors showed up to vote. And they offered a the guy money. And then they brought, you know, then they bribed him. And they gave him free web servers. And they, you know, they all this shit to him. And he ended up, you know, vote ended up shutting down because the Pizzagate subreddit was on Reddit, then they banned it, then it moved to vote. Then they did this whole massive elaborate campaign to like compromise this guy and, and he wasn't making any money on it and they offered him money and they free servers. It's like, you know, you know, who if you offer free servers, it's like the FBI running a honeypot and they just want to see who's accessing this website. And then the investors pulled out the money, offer like, okay, if you do this, we'll sue you or we'll give you $150,000 and you shut down the website, okay? Or we're going to sue you into the, you know, he's broke. He doesn't have a lawyer. So, you know, they did the same thing with 4chan. They tried to do the same thing with 8chan. And remember, they blocked, you search 8chan on Google. It doesn't show up anymore. You can't even find the website URL. Yeah. And their internet, their URL stolen. Well, I think they, I think they uh, shut it down. And he had to re- restart a whole new thing. So the, the, fa- the coon. Yeah, that's what it, it is. Yeah, I'm the founder like, had to restart yeah. it. But um, so we're gonna De- when we release De- this, the DeFi people they have their they they have to run their system on their own hardware. So it's not like how you are doing. You can make your own hardware. Like it's yeah. like it's you have to use their hardware. So it's like that's kind of fishy as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. but so you see when we do that immediately, 
all these people they're like you know gab bitch you they, they have a there's a whole program like ghs ghsq government corporations they have they have a massive program just to sort of control these alternative media sites to infiltrate them to attack them with bots to spread disinformation to cause shit storm they're gonna start shit talking me they're gonna attack the company they're gonna start digging oh, yeah. for bank accounts they're gonna they're gonna start um causing all sorts of, of problems and, it, and it's like um uh it's just gonna be so there's a question of like when do i really want to jump into this shit storm yeah like no. when do i yeah. Yeah, and you're like you know, you're like building everything in the background, just waiting for every, the right time, and then you're just gonna uh, pronounce and you know you release it to the world, kind of thing. That's what that's what your plan is. And I think we might have like some. Th we might release the software, but then third parties might. You know, there's some celebrities, and some guy got fired from Fox News because he wouldn't shut up about X Y Z, and he wants to start. He still needs to make money, so he wants to start his own media platform, and he has like two million people, and it was like, oh, you know, and we we had people like that approach us. And it might not just be like one guy, it might be a bunch of them. And then they can go whack a mole and just go deal with that guy. Yeah. And, and we're just a software provider. And yeah. I don't, you know, I, I honestly feel like when they lose media control and they, okay, so, so these people are brainwashed. They're, they're like North <laughs> Korean brainwashed. Um, they think up is down, left is right. There's some, and you know, and on every, on, there's like some guy, so, you know, some black guy killed someone robbed some grocery store and shot some guy right and, and they go in the news and they say like uh he's a white nationalist and <laughs> he shot the guy because he asked him to wear a mask and then and then and this is all over the national media it's like white nationalist someone asked him to wear a mask so he went to his car and got a gun and shot him and then and then a week later it was some guy robbing a convenience store right yeah. And I'm like, what? And so they're just <laughs> lying. It's just like, it's like, it's so, and people believe this, this, this shit. They just like, it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. They believe it. Yeah. So you have these people and, um, uh, they're just, they're gone. They're, they're, they're gone. And I, I think at this point, like you need to have at least 5% of people that aren't brainwashed, that, that can have free speech, that, that can talk, that, that can think, and, you know, we might need machine learning filters to ban people who can't think. Like, I, I'm literally, like, I'm, I have books about, like, psychometric profiling and, like, opinion, um, like, uh, opinion monitoring. There's this thing, you know, Q, they, there's this thing called the Q methodology where you take a person and you give them these questions and you can sort their, their belief system. So there's surveys where you survey a population mm -hmm. and you try to see what the population thinks but you have a thousand people, right? Or 10,000. So 10,000 data points, this Q methodology, you only have one person and you can generate a bunch of data points and find that whole person's belief system. So I might even take the people and you believe this. Okay. You're over here. You believe that you're over there and they don't need to anti-vax or vax or whatever you, you can, uh, whatever. You don't even need to see each other. So just stop, shut up. <laughs> because I, they're just sitting there like yelling and bitching and no one, yeah. and, and data information doesn't change their opinion. So just let them believe what they want to believe. Right. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, and there's a thing like, does a person have uh, justification for what they say? So some guy says, I read the study and they're doing this. And this guy tested this on this monkey and he got brain holes. And the other guy says, no, no, no. I love, I love my vaccine. I love my vaccine. That's, <laughs> that's blah, blah, blah. I don't know. That, that, completely blah. Like, so like, it, it, so the question is like, um, what is the evidence that the person says? So I might, you know, a bot says that's, that's an anti-vaxxer statement. That study is anti-vax. And it's like, okay. <laughs> like it, the data is anti-vax. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, so there's a question of like, are they just, uh, is it a bot? Is this a human being? Is it a human being that can't think? And I might just put, I'm literally writing machine learning algorithms to take all these people that do not use evidence, facts, reason, people that aren't going to change their opinion and just remove them. Just, there's going to be a filter, like a checklist. Yeah. And you well, at least, it and at least allow people a, to filter out, you know, 
<laughs> the people. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna have like a slider yeah. and a and a and they're gonna be able to choose their. They're gonna have what's called client side filters. Mm -hmm. So you can choose your filter list and turn it off and turn it down and have like a little slide. It's not like Twitter where we're gonna choose your feed ranking. The the, exactly. the, the filtering is gonna be client side. Yeah. So 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 the social media it isn't just about avoiding censorship. It's also how do I stop these governments and companies and PR for all this bullshit? How do I stop them from flooding the social media, uh, flooding it yeah. with um, bullshit, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what they're doing is they're, they're doing like thread sliding and form sliding mm -hmm. and just flooding these forms with relevant crap just so we don't want them paying attention to this one thing. So we're going to flood this form with 12,000 UFO, alien, COVID magnet, COVID 5G. They just come up with bullshit and they just flood the, the thing to stop people from talking about this thing over here. Like someone dropping, you know, the guy did this and they dropped dead. Okay, don't talk about that. But talk about UFOs and COVID magnets and COVID 5G and the Saudis and the, you know, they, they, they're just trying to figure out like, how do you distract people from focusing on this thing that we don't want them talking about by flooding this form with a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And, and so you, uh, so the way that the, the, that social media is managed today is um, disgusting. It's like, um, I, I almost think that, you know, we should ban social media and just have a book repository. You know, you just, you wrote, want to say something, you should write a book. And then <laughs> most of the books should be banned because they're propaganda. Mm -hmm. So then you should, and then you should just ban 80% of the books. Because they're just sh propaganda lies, you know. So, um, well, I'm free. To, I'm freedom based. So I, don't, I don't like the banning part, but I I like the idea of allowing people to be able to filter their, you know, their own feeds and you know the better algorithm for that I have control over, not someone else having control over. Like uh, the uh, there's this uh, Telegram group, just like you were saying. Like it's supposed to be like common common law based kind of thing. You just go in there and it's all QAnon stuff, Trump stuff, so like. Like the government's killing us all, blah blah blah. It's like, dude, I thought this was a uh, we're supposed to be learning about common law here. What the what the hell? Like, like that's my problem with uh, the social media is like I can't find the, the people and the groups that I kind of want to interact with. But, you know, I just get discovery, stuck with all discovery. the yeah, the discovery is so hard. Right. So as soon as you, if you had an algorithm and you could see people who are like you who believe similar things and like you or who are rational, and you had someone to find those people and create a group immediately they, they have an algorithm and they just put they, they have it's called network deconstruction and they say we don't want these people talking to each other yeah so they will come in with bots and disinformation they say we got to break these groups up keep them small dilute the topics make them fight the narrative make start infighting and this has been automated actually this book is this is some russian guy this is really interesting he read a book surveillance valley and he wrote this book. It's like the NSA, the 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 ARPANET, the, the military developed the internet to control social movements. They said, we're, you know, they had this problem, the Vietnam War. How do we occupy this country, right? How do we get them to accept the fact that we're occupying their country without them fighting us? So they said, we have to control the media. We have to control perception um, and so on. And, and they, they DARPA prototyped Twitter in the 1980s. They had people sitting in front of like a freaking Apple II computer seeing how their opinions could be changed by promoting certain opinions and suppressing others. So instead of like U.S. military funded media says love the military, love the love the people occupying the country, love the president we put in. Right. Yeah. They'll say like some guy that you think is your friend or someone that you knew personally, and he has an opinion, if his opinion is the right opinion, we'll pump that all over the place. And if he has the wrong opinion, we'll just hide it. Yeah. So it doesn't look like the opinions are coming from them, but they're controlling what you, so like, uh, they control what you see. So if you love Hillary Clinton, you tweet one thing, everyone will see it. But you don't like Hillary Clinton, no one will see it. And th this is how Twitter, Facebook, yeah. Google, this is the sh actually the shadow, the shadow banning. This is actually how the ranking works. In, there, there was a there was a researcher. He showed that you could rig any election, that you could control 80 percent of the votes by controlling the order of search results on certain keywords. 
he did a research paper on this. The military knows this. The PR firms know this. The political parties know this. Every person knows this except for the public because they're stupid, right? Yeah. They don't care about this stuff. They don't, they don't know how they're manipulated. Yeah. This researcher got death threats. They tried to retract his paper. They cut his grants. They tried to destroy him. And all he did was publish a little service, a study showing he could manipulate his students' political opinions by rearranging the order of search results in, in, a, in a fake Google page. Yeah. And they want to destroy him because you got to keep the public stupid. You, gotta, <laughs> you don't want to tell them how you're manipulating them, right? You can't share so, that to the public. You only got to share that with government officials, man. We, you know. <laughs> the owners. Yeah. Like that's, you got to classify that. We got to, <laughs> so we got to protect the, the peasants from, from this, you know, like, <laughs> so the, so, so these countries, they're, they're understanding now uh, overseas that Twitter is not neutral and Facebook is neutral. It's control of the State Department, the government, the military, the corporations, the NGOs. The, there's so many groups now putting pressure on them. So you, you have a country like uh, some African country and the president says, um, I don't like Twitter. And he just the, the Twitter censored his tweets. The president banned, blocks Twitter from the whole country. Did Trump go and you censored you? Trump took Twitter. Uh, Trump was taken off Twitter. He should have just executive order and he should have blocked Twitter. Yeah. In the United States until the election was done. Yeah. Right. Just go poop. And he didn't. He can't do that. But in Africa, the and in China, um, you know, so there, so these countries now they see this as a national security threat, and they're saying we need to. So the the people in the Philippines, the president's family, they're building their own domestic social media and they're blocking U.S. social media, then funding their own domestic social media. So it doesn't look like like it's the president and his family, but it is. Mm. And they own Twitter and they're billionaires and they're and and this is really bad, too, because you have like nepotism and this guy, he'll own all the media in the country and they're, they're not going to be able to get rid of them. And your vote doesn't matter because this family owns all the, all the, the Twitter and the Facebook for that country. And so that guy's family is going to be in power for 100 years, no matter how much stuff, you know, if he stole 100 yeah. trillion dollars. What, what are you going to do about it? And because he controls everything, right? And so the, so the, pro sorta... the problem is they'll vote for that because they'll manipulate the mind through the media that he produces for them to vote for him. So you're like, they voted for it. So now you can, you're all, <laughs> you're all voted for to be your slave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, so there's like the president and there's the vice president and they're elected separately. So the president's from this group and then the vice president's the opposition. So the president gets in power. Then he has the vice president arrested and the media says, yeah, because he's corrupt. <laughs> and they're just arresting their political opposition now and say, Oh, because he's corrupt. And, um, you know, so the whole world is, it's a shit show. I, I, I so I honestly, I can't say, that even if we build we build this thing and you get people free information and you 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 get rid of the shilling, I cannot say that more than ten or fifteen percent of the population is going to be able to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. and save themselves. I, I at this point I'm pretty sure at least 80, 85 percent of the people are ready to commit suicide. They're ready to march off the cliff like lemmings. They're ready to be exploited. They're going to beg for to be enslaved, impoverished. Eat, they're going to be eating insects and begging the master. And like, is it a green, is it a red day or a yellow day? Do I need one <laughs> mask? Do I need four masks? Do I, do I need to bring the respirator out? Can I leave my house? It's a, it's a red day. I'm not going to leave my house today because the government says it's a red. You know, they did this shit with 9-11 uh, and said, oh, the terror, it's a red day. It's a yellow day, green, green, yellow, red. And, and today's a red COVID day. Don't leave your house. All people under 45 who have had less than six vaccines cannot leave the house for more than <laughs> 20 minutes. And they mu must wear three masks, you know, and they're, and they're doing this Simon Says bullshit in the UK. Like, and then people are just like, no, they just keep changing the rules for no reason, no data. They just, this week it's this rule and we're going to end the lockdown next week. And, oh no, we're not ending the lockdown. It's going to go on for another four weeks. And then the middle of it, they're like, oh, but we ended it early. So you should thank us. And then yeah. two days later, oh, we need, we, there's a resurgence. <laughs> there's a new strain, new strain, Brazilian strain, Brazilian strain. Don't leave your house, the Brazilian strain. You know, it's, and it's, it's like. Uh, it's funny you say eating bugs because CNN did a video about eating cicadas. 
<laughs> so they're already pushing it. <laughs> Turning us into pod peoples is what they want. <laughs> So I, I, you know, is there any saving the, so like basically like these people, I, I don't know. I, I feel, well, I feel like they're doomed. They're yeah. screwed. Well, we, we, we can only hope. So we'll just keep pushing the technology and keep going forward. You know, if, if we're, if we're screwed, we're screwed. When we die, we die. <laughs> just keep pushing the technology. Let's, you know, might as well at least try. So, um, Actually, the reason I'm sitting outside here, I'm at my mother's house because uh, my internet, uh, I got Comcast and they <laughs> they, uh, they wanted um, my uh, automatically payment. So I was like, because once I got into crypto, I was like, fuck, I don't need a bank account anymore. So I did eBay. I was doing eBay. So, you know, I needed a PayPal thing. And so that's about the only card bank account I kind of had. So like, all right, I'll do a uh, direct deposit for uh, my internet. And uh, they didn't tell me that my payments weren't going through because I don't keep much on that account. Like I only yeah, keep yeah. a little bit on that account. And uh, I think it was like three months that I didn't pay a bill. And then all of a sudden they shut me $1, off. $1,200. Well, I don't even care what Overturned. I want to but yeah. Um, uh, but uh, they, they called me up and, oh, you cancel your account. You close your account. And I'll like, ship, uh, send back your equipment and stuff like that. I call them up. I'm like, dude, you guys didn't even tell me that I missed a payment. I'm like, what kind of cu customer service is this? You guys could have like programmed a for, you could have paid someone like for eight hours to program a little thing to tell me that I missed a goddamn payment, and so I was like, I'm not they paying didn't. you. I'm not paying you guys. I'm not gonna re-sign up for your bass, your damn asses. So that's why I'm. I'm. I was hoping you you'd be focusing out on the mesh network so I could you know, oh, yeah. fi finally move on we onto that. But but also my brother, uh, he did this. Uh, you know how what you're doing with the mesh network. He had, he had a company. He actually just sold it. So I, I was hoping he he just like. Uh, start building a, a company with some Skycoin, but if you're not gonna do it, you know, right away, then I'm just gonna have to do a, a direct signal from my mom's house here to my house across town. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, fuck, so Com you, fuck Comcast, I'm done with them. <laughs> so you can take a point-to-point -point antenna, and our configuration now. There's some one thing we have to change, but um, basically you can do a point-to-point -point connection, and it doesn't care whether it's wireless or wi or Ethernet. So right now you can yeah. plug in a bunch of things, and it'll connect. But it'll also work over Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi just looks like an Ethernet connection. But and there's a bunch of equipment um, from different different companies, or even just like a a, mm -hmm. a mesh. And then there's this uh, chip that you can plug in an antenna to. Yeah. And you can um, if well, you have line of sight. My brother, really yeah, my brother has uh, all that equipment and stuff. Like I said, he he had a company. He just mm -hmm. sold it, but he still kind of works for him. He has all the old equipment that he had. So I'm going to pull some equipment. And actually, I'm going to actually do that. But I I, I still want to do it with Skycoin, you know, because eventually, mm -hmm. once I figure my side out, then I'm going to go to my neighbors and be like, the hey, whole, let's do this. And, the yeah. whole county, <laughs> the whole neighborhood. Well, I just have a small town, so I'm going to start with the town. But um. Anyways, I also want to know, are you guys ever thinking about doing like a, a phone kind of mesh network or is that a long-term okay, plan so or? I have, um, oh my God. So, so what, so we I'll have a, la a Skycoin laptop, a Skycoin phone, nice. a hardware wallet. We have, you know, th this is the SkyMiner. So this, this is like eight computers and then a router. We're designing a new router. Um, each computer has four or six cores. They're cell phone processors, really low power. You can actually, people are running this like a so, tiny ass solar panel, which is crazy. Um, and it has a hundred gigabit ethernet um, to each of these. So each, and then um, you put in an SD card and each one can run like two blockchains, four blockchains. And then we got like a power distribution bus. So, so we're, we're building a corporate version of this, yeah. which is like, if you're a company, you can buy 300 nodes and throw them in your office and it'll run like your email server, your internal text message, like messaging for the company. It'll run file. You have like your own Dropbox, your own Google drive, just for your friends or your company. So you could take, you could run your own like Raspberry Pi, you're, you and your friends can have like this, like a file sharing, like your own uh, Google Drive. Yeah. The files are stored on your own computer, not on Google, not on Amazon, not on, you know. So this is for small companies that have multiple campuses and that operate in multiple countries because um, 
in China, you have Baidu Drive and it, it's slow in the US. And then in the US, you have Google Drive and it's blocked in China. And then you, uh, you can pay a third party and they're charging like $50 a year or $200 a year per employee just to have this little drive. But a hard drive is $100. And so it's cheap. So we're creating this decentralized file system first for small businesses and, um, and then also for, um, you know, just sharing files and movies and, and having a copy of your audio files and, and, you know, and um, having to centralize. So I can have a copy at my office, have a copy at my house, have a copy at my mom's, and it'll automatically sync. So you can have a fire at two locations and you won't lose your data. And it's encrypted. So the, so the computer that actually is storing the data cannot read the data. So you could have all your music files on your computer and the FBI can raid your house SWAT team with the guns, and they can they can't open. You can't get your music files, so fuck them. Yeah, nice. You know, it's, so it's, uh, <laughs> that's Sky Miner 1.0. Isn't you guys are working on a 2.0? 2.0. Right? Yeah, the 2.0. I I'm almost I'm doing a refactor, and it's I wouldn't say it's from scratch, but there's not even like one line of code that's not being moved, and um and the whole installation. Like I'm gonna for the company setup. Um, if, if you have high-end servers, there's this thing called IMPI. Um, and if I have like a million servers like Google, I can press one button and through the IMPI interface, install Linux on all those computers, boot them up, run them. I can nuke the operating system in one command and reinstall the whole operating system called net, uh, boot over network. We're implementing that for these little, ra for, so there's a chip shortage right now. And we're designing a custom PCB board and, and we're using a standard SOC. Later, we might have a custom SOC because we're, we're doing some, I'll tell you about this later. Uh, but um, but um, I'm gonna have this little chip, like a half, 50 cent, like maybe ESP32. And I have my cell phone and I hit a button, it'll connect to them over Wi-Fi, and it'll say, download, the, download this file, write it to the boot sector, restart, and then it'll boot with the new software. So it's broken, you hit one button, it'll nuke the whole file system, reboot from scratch, reboot from scratch, start up, go through a self-test diagnostic, connect to the network, and then just start running. So th this is, this is um, and I'm doing this not for like these home people, this is for like enterprise. And later on, there's some fun stuff that, uh, so when in Skywire, okay, our current internet, when you send a packet, you, you get a tweet or something. It goes from Japan to Thailand to, uh, you know, LA to Wyoming to blah, blah, blah. It goes through 50 people, right? They see your source, the source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and the time. So they know exactly your, your IP address, yeah. who it's from, who it's going to. The, every single Google changed their algorithm to force every website to have a single IP address. Jeez. To, to, or to make it easier for, mm -hmm. if you want to, if you're uh, easier to track what websites you're accessing, because before there were VPSs in a blog, and there might be 600 blogs on the same IP address, so they don't know which blog you're you're, you're researching. So Google said we're going to mm -hmm. dock these people for not having a single IP address, yeah. and it made it a lot easier to track what website you were going to. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um, and this isn't just the U.S. It's if your traffic went through Japan, the, the Japanese government, the Thai government, the Hong Kong government, the whatever, the, the company operating the fiber optic cable, any ISP that your traffic transited over, they're collecting that data and selling it to anyone, actually, the advertising firms, to whatever. Like, it, it's to the point that, like, um, like, Pretend you were, you know, you know, China, like some government, like the North Korea wanted to go and buy all of the IP addresses of some uh, who access some blog that w would be read by like people working at the NSA or something. If they want to do that, they could just go and pay them five thousand dollars. They'll still sell. It. They don't care who to. They don't. It's like a, it's a giant free for all. The police can buy the data. The government can buy the data. Private corp, like if Monsanto doesn't like this blog about Anta Monsanto, they can go and there's a broker and they will sell you a target list basically of everyone who was accessing that blog. I I I had people contact me and they wanted to sell me like um, you know all the newspaper articles that were being read by employees at Goldman Sachs. And I said, you know, where'd you get this data? Is it legal? And it's like, yeah, it's perfectly legal. And I, where'd you get the data? Oh, the ISP gave it to us. 
And, and is it legal? It's like, yeah, yeah, we're a Cayman Island company. So US law doesn't apply to us. So it's legal, it's legal in the Cayman, it's legal where we are. And I'm like, okay. And like, this is what, they literally, that's what they told me. And, um, and so, so, whole, so the new internet, we're not gonna have IP addresses. We have public keys and everything is encrypted end to end. And we have multiple hops and each hop only knows the next hop and the previous hop. So if you're listening, even if you're running a Skywire node, you know the previous hop, you know the next hop, and maybe you know how much bandwidth that connection sent, but you cannot read what they're sending and you don't know where it's coming from and you don't know where it's going. And th this is the new, this is the new internet is, uh, and it's so all, it's all pieces of data, right? All, all broken up and sent all over the place. And yeah, so you might have five connections to someone and they all go over different paths and, and the data cannot be read because it's all encrypted. It doesn't matter what it is. And each hop, if you're intercepting a hop between Skywire nodes, you can't read it either because there's transport, there's point to point, there's a hop to hop encryption called transport encryption. Then there's end to end encryption. Then applications can have additional encryption if they want additional encryption or user authentication. So, but to do this, um, these we can only get 30 to 50 megabits per second of encryption per cell phone chip. So we're actually integrating FPGAs onto the board so that we can encrypt the traffic between Skywire nodes in hardware at line speed, even at one gigabit or 10 gigabit per second. So if you have a corporate network and you have a 10 gigabit fiber optic line, we have one chip and we will be able to encrypt all of the traffic going over that SPF module at line speed. So if you're a company and you have 500 fiber optic lines that are 10 gigabits each feeding into your network backbone, we're having hardware level, you know, this is like military grade hardware level, you know, encryption uh, with FPGAs and it's, uh, that's Skywire 3.0. So if you're, you know, if you're a company and you're, um, or a telecom provider, this is stuff that only Google, like Google did this, like they, Google has enough money and people that they can design their own chips and they caught the U.S., they cooperate with the U.S. government, but they also caught them intercepting fiber optic lines between their data centers. Yeah. So they're sending Gmail traffic between data centers on, with no encryption on the line and the U.S. government's just siphoning it and they didn't even know about it. Then they learned about it from Snowden. Then they installed encryption on these 100 gigabit fiber optic lines between their uh, data centers. And so, yeah, Google has that. But if you're a, a company with 10,000 employees or, and you only have, you know, 15 data centers and only 10,000 employees and you don't have, uh, you know, your own ASIC FPGA engineers and you know, Russian cybersecurity experts and, you know, and, and you're not big enough to produce your own, you know, fiber optic encryption modules like Google is, um, you didn't have access to this before. So, so for we, so this is like government, military companies, and they, they want open source firmware. So they want to be able to compile the firmware themselves and put it on the chip. And if they don't like the chip that we provide, they can produce their own board according to the standard. They can buy their own components, they can solder them, and they can compile the firmware themselves and flash it onto the device in their own factory if they wanted to. And so this is like, uh, you know, this is something we've been asked for for six, and, and this, none of this is really asked for by the public, but companies, governments, like um, there's a lot of, I can't even talk about it, like, and I signed like NDAs, but there's a lot of bullshit a lot of bullshit going on, go, going on with this. And, and it's even like um, one government agency wiretapping like another agency or one group in this agency wiretapping another agency or, um, or like a government agency has an approved vendor list for their encryption, but all the companies are back doors so that they can get be spied on by another. So there's like a company and they'll sell you like an encrypted messaging app, yeah. but it was actually funded by some billionaire who wanted to back door, get a back door. And so like they'll, pr they produce like a, an encrypted messaging app for oil companies, keep your data secure. <laughs> and it's really like some executive at Exxon Mobil started the encryption app so that he could steal proprietary data from oil companies in Sudan 
or some, sh- you know, to see what the people in the company, you know, so it's like, you can't trust anyone. Like, remember that AB encryption scandal and the US government sets up like some Swiss encryption company to sell secure encryption equipment to protect you from the NSA. But the company was actually being run by the US government to spy on European <laughs> company. It's like, uh, you know, uh, you, you, ca- you can't trust any, anyone. In, in, if you trust anyone in sec- computer security, you're an idiot. Okay, you're just stupid. You're you're being you know they're uh, even you know I like Proton Mail and I like but the company their parent company is a data analytics company that sells you know what people are watching you know they they have a VPN they're and they might not be they may or may not be selling individual user data but they're definitely selling like what websites are popular with their VPN users and this and that and and what kind of email subscription list and they're they're aggregating and doing demographics and do they sell individual user data? Would they respond to a government request? Like most of these companies, if they get a request from a government, they're not, they're going to do it. They're not going to shut down their whole company and lose $10 million a year just because they they just, you know, they're not going to martyr themselves to go down fighting to protect their users. If it's going to cost, destroy their whole business right yeah lava bit was the only company that did that and i know there were there were ten thousand companies that got these requests lava bit was the only company that said we're going to shut down because we're not going to do the subpoena we're going to shut the whole company down yeah so i so it's you know and telegram's getting their balls twisted by the german government and and so telegram's okay right now right but in a year what what choice do they have Right. Yeah. So we need to re-decentralize these, these media apps, these messaging apps. We need to take control of the user data. And my feeling is, my feeling though, is when, you know, when these people lose control of the media, these oligarchs, um, we're basically hitting, heading into a civil war s- situation. Yeah. And they know that. And they don't even care. They're actually investing in these companies because they know that at any time, they have this cartel controlling the government, the media. They know at any time, their access to the public can be cut off, just like Trump's access. So what happened to Trump, so this group right here, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're in power right now, right? Then they're yeah. okay with it. But they know that the little oligarchy group, they could decide, well, we're the new group and these people aren't in our group, so we're gonna shut them off and we're gonna, they call it closing ranks. So it's like they have 10 people and they decide, oh, us six are the real important people and those four don't matter anymore. And we're just, Bleh! and you know, they their <laughs> cables are going to get cut. So they're funding. Is that the same, same closing ranks, the same thing when a, a dictator takes over and then he kills all his military guys and likes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the people that put them in power, yeah. his, his promoters, the people in the media, yeah. they, like, he gets in power, he cuts all, he gets rid of them because <laughs> they're too powerful. They, they yep. could threaten him. They could, you know, they put him yeah. in. So tomorrow they could put in someone else. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that part one of the sent interview. Um, part two and three will be coming out in the next couple days, probably spaced a couple days apart as I, I am on my vacation or my trip. It's not vacation, it's a trip to help free a man out of jail. I took half of the trip. This video was posted about a week or two has been two. It's been a long time since I did this interview with Seth, not a very long time, but, uh, what didn't, couldn't get it up as fast, um, as I wished to do so. I didn't have the time to sit down and, uh, you know, listen to the interview and find places to break it up and take things out if I needed to take things out. Um, but do watch the next two parts. And uh, like always, until next time, I'm going to leave you guys in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Peace.